Hello, my name is John and I'm going to be talking about how to name organic compounds. So naming organic compounds falls under the IUPAC guidelines. IUPAC is um, an organization that actually, for a living, argues over how to name organic compounds. And so luckily, I've broken it down into um, a nifty chart here that will explain how to uh, name organic compounds. And it's more in detail in your course pack. So I recommend looking at this um, when you're studying how to name organic compounds and the nomenclature behind it. So, as you can see, we have the FFS technique, which is three steps to uh, identifying the um, compound we're going to be naming and then how to actually execute that and get to the final structure at the bottom of step three there and how to actually um, come about the name. So, we look at our table here also. Uh, we have four subjects here. is the stereochemistry, the substituents, the base name, and the suffixes. So, like I said before, just check the chart in the course back because it's much more in detail. Okay, so first step, we're going to actually identify the molecule that we're being named here. So step one is find the longest carbon chain. So the test for that is what I have to call the trace test. And um, like it's called, also called the pencil test, where you're just going to be tracing to make sure that the chain is continuous. So I have here one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And six carbons is going to correspond to a base name of hexane. Now it's also referenced in the chart here, base name. We're, also, we're looking at straight chains, by the way. So meth, eth, pro, but etc. onward, different names for how many carbons are in the chain there. So now that we've established the um, main carbon chain here, we're going to address the carbons. And this means that we're going to number this base, this base chain um, through numbering the system and giving that these substituents, the Cl, the methyl, the alcohol, are going to have addresses, which means they're just going to have numbers on the carbon. So we can do this two ways. We can, uh, we can name from, uh, or number from left to right, or from right to left. So numbering from left to right, we put one, two, three, four, five, six there. Or we can go from right to left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, so we have two ways we can number this. So what's the one we do, right? Well, we look at the substituents. And we tell, we want, and if we follow the rule is that the higher priority substituent gives the lower number. And so according to IFAC guidelines, you want to get the highest priority um, takes um, precedence over other pri hypothetical priorities. So we have here um, substituents and um, suffixes here. So things like um, alkanes or things with double bonds or triple bonds or alcohols, in the guidelines, these take higher priority over substituents like halogens and alkyl groups. Well, we have a halogen, we have an alkyl group, so these are going to be the substituents that become prefixes. And we also have another substituent, the alcohol, which is going to take the form of a suffix. So according to IUPAC, the alcohol has higher priority over these two substituents. So we want to give this, since it's the highest priority, the lowest number. So looking at our two numbering systems here, it seems that we want to go from right to left in order to give the alcohol the second position. So we can for sure circle the numbering system we want. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I can write these down for my reference. At the 2 position, I'm going to have my alcohol. At the 4, I'm going to have my methyl group. And at the 5 position, I'm going to have my chlorine. Now that I've addressed my carbons, I'm going to put them into the final structure here. The final structure is detailed like this. There's four sections, just how I have it laid out here. Stereochem, substituents, base name, and the suffixes. I break it up as the same. We have stereo, which was referenced in the last lecture. And there, are, there is no stereo here right now. Then we go into our prefixes, our main name, and our suffixes. So like I said, we have two substituents that become prefixes, the methyl and the chlorine. Then we have our main name, which we established as hexane, and our suffix, which is um, altered by having the alcohol. So the first thing we're going to do is lay out our prefixes, which we know are methyl and chlorine. So according to the rules here, halogens become things like fluoro, bromo, chloro, and our alkyl groups become things like methyl, ethyl, and propyl. So, we have our methyl at 4, and we have our chloro at 5. Now, the correct way to number these is because we have two prefixes, we're going to do it alphabetically. So our first one is going to be 5-chloro. And then we go into our next prefix, which is 4-methyl. These are our only two prefix substituents. Now, we go right into our main name, which is the hexane. Now, notice here that we have hyphens between um, letters and numbers. That's an important thing to note. And notice how I don't have it here because it's between two letters. So now that I have my main name here, I'm going to finish it off with my one suffix, which is my alcohol. 
And now the suffix, according to this table, is an alcohol, and it changes the ending, the ane, into an ane all to indicate it as an alcohol. So what I'm actually going to do is alter this to incorporate the alcohol's position. I'm going to put in the ane, then I'm going to indicate where this is, and it's at the second position. I'm going to put a 2, and I'm finally going to cap it off with putting the all back to indicate the alcohol. And so, our final name, 5-chloro-4-methyl-hexen-2-ol. And that is how you name organic compounds.